Good, good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Warrenberger, and I am a, a, an adult cardiologist at Dartmouth Hitchcock in Lebanon, New Hampshire. And I, uh, I really appreciate this opportunity to talk with you. My topic today will be a little bit more of a in the trenches uh, sort of topic that I think may be very practical for uh, clinicians and uh, particularly for pediatricians. Um, Probably about 10 years ago, my institution up north decided in their infinite wisdom that they could save some money by turning doctors into typists. They could save transcription costs, and so they pushed all of us to start typing our notes. Well, it didn't take very long for me to realize that the uh, quality of what I was producing was terrible, and at that point, I turned to a new technology, uh, speech recognition software. And uh, over the years, I watched it evolve, and I was on a on a uh, conquest to try to improve the accuracy, make it as good as possible. And I realized there were not a lot of places out there for good information uh, or for some of the technology. And I sort of, as a lark, started a little passion business, which I called Speech Recognition Solutions, and which uh, has probably put a lot more wrinkles on my forehead than meat on the table. But uh, it has nevertheless been fun. And this is my opportunity to share with you uh, some of the passion uh, and some of the excitement of this new technology, speech recognition. Um, if you would turn now to your second slide, uh, this is background. Um, I think you all know, and other talks at this session have highlighted the fact that we are being increasingly pushed to capture all information electronically. We're all moving to electronic health records, and there's a very important reason for that. There's a lot of benefit from it. It is able to uh, provide clinical decision support. Uh, it can provide automatic uh, error checking. It will feed research, billing many, many advantages of, of, of going electronic. Uh, there is concern, though, uh, among clinicians about whether uh, an electronic health record can truly capture the detailed uh, clinical data that is really critically important in our jobs uh, trying to take care of patients and document what we do. And just to bring this to light, I'm going to present a sort of a real-world uh, challenge, a clinical vignette. And I apologize, being an adult cardiologist, uh, I am not going to present a pediatric case. But I'm going to tell you about a 60-year-old man who presents to the emergency department um, with central chest discomfort. It was radiating to his throat and back. It was very, very sharp and, and variably described as burning. Had been going on for about 24 hours. And um, he described no alleviating uh, or aggravating factors. He did have several associated uh, uh, conditions, including nausea, vomiting, and he described some uh, fairly profuse uh, sweating, diaphoresis. His examination was uh, notable for a generally ill-appearing uh, middle-aged guy. He had a somewhat low blood pressure, uh, but he had clear lungs and he had no a normal cardiac exam. He had diffuse abdominal tenderness. Um, his EKG showed only a, a sinus tachycardia with some nonspecific ST segment changes, and his chest x-ray was relatively normal. And if you'd move to the next slide, which is uh, uh, consideration of the differential diagnosis, as you can see, there are a lot of potentially serious things that may be going on in this elderly guy. Could it be cardiac ischemia or infarction, acute pericarditis, dissection, pulmonary embolism, a pneumothorax, Borjavi syndrome, or perhaps some other, uh, uh, perhaps less, uh, less uh, dangerous situations? These are the things, obviously, you don't want to miss, but the list is fairly exhaustive. But my point is that in any clinical scenario, the details are what are really important. And we all learned in medical school that 90% of the uh, diagnosis comes from the history. That's no less true today than it was when we were all trained. And so the details matter. Uh, for instance, in this particular scenario, this guy presenting with chest pain and vomiting, what came first? Did he develop the chest pain first and then start the, the nausea and the vomiting? That might lead you more to thinking this was an acute myocardial infarction. Or did he start vomiting, and in the context of some severe vomiting, did he develop the chest and abdominal pain, making you wonder perhaps about a, a primary uh, gastrointestinal issue uh, or an esophageal tear. Some other important details which would, would need to be part of your record were the fact that his entire family ate clams on the half shell about two hours before his symptoms started, and that both his wife and his son are also throwing up fairly violently. So as you can see, these details really do add to our, uh, to our, uh, the, the important clinical information. Um, what, what I show you in the next slide is a, 
uh, screenshot of what's called Note Writer in the electronic medical record at my institution. We're a large uh, multi-specialty institution, Dartmouth Hitchcock, and we have about six months ago adopted Epic, which is one of the large commercial vendors. It's an excellent product. This is what they call Note Writer, and this is the little button click tool that you could use to try to do justice to a clinical problem. Now, the people at Epic are not going to be happy with me for saying this, but I think as clinicians, we know that you can't take a complex uh, clinical scenario and boil it down to button clicks. You can try. They have a screen for chest pain. They have a screen for abdominal pain. If you indicate there are multiple symptoms, they'll give you a combined screen. And as you click those buttons, it will, uh, it will do its best to try to uh, weave it into a paragraph. But honestly, most physicians don't think that's suitable. So this is why I want to talk briefly about the clinical narrative, and then I want to show you how speech recognition can help you do that. The clinical narrative is a time-honored description of what's going on. And you know, this is really the, the gold standard in terms of accurate legal documentation. It's how we communicate with each other. If you were to refer a patient or you are to refer a patient to somebody else, it's that clinical narrative. It's the description of what uh, you saw, heard, and thought that uh, really helps you communicate. Um, it does also document or, or, or back up your coding and, and, and reimbursement. But there's some bad things about the clinical narrative. It's time consuming. Uh, if you're going to type it, uh, it's illegible. If you're going to write it, potentially, um, it's, uh, it can be somewhat delayed if you're using uh, transcription. And then finally, it's not necessarily providing actionable data, uh, which uh, could be fueled, uh, used to fuel your electronic health record. So what I'm going to show you is, I think, a way that we can preserve the clinical narrative without the negatives, and that is using speech recognition software. So I have installed in the computer, which is uh, D demonstrated on the screen now uh, a relatively newly re released version of Dragon Naturally Speaking and I'm going to take you through a brief clinical demonstration and I apologize as a cardiologist I'm now going to switch from my uh, presented case with abdominal pain to just a generic uh, unpracticed uh, cardiac patient and I want to say also that I loaded the software on this computer about two days ago I have probably done about five or ten minutes of uh, dictation on this, and I did that intentionally. I want you to have an idea of how this works out of the box, not a slick presentation from, from somebody trying to sell you something uh, who's made sure it's not going to make any errors. And what I'm going to ma make up right now is totally fictional, and I I'll make it up as I go. Open WordPad. Soap template. Select all. Select all. Set font size 14. Next field. This is a 55-year-old man who presents to the office today with chest pain approximately two weeks after being discharged after presenting with a non-ST segment elevation myocardial infarction period. At that time, he underwent heart catheterization, which showed a 99% proximal LAD stenosis and only insignificant disease in both his circumflex and RCA period. He underwent uncomplicated thrombectomy and placement of a cipher drug-eluting stent in the LAD period. He apparently did well until yesterday morning when he developed recurrent symptoms, which he says were basically identical to his presenting pain with his heart attack period. He had multiple episodes overnight period. He took nitroglycerin with only partial relief period. Finally alerting his wife, comma, he was brought to our emergency department where he was having ongoing symptoms period. Next field. On physical examination in the emergency department, he appeared in no acute distress period. His blood pressure was 90 over 60, comma, heart rate 120, comma, and his weight was 155 pounds, period. Normal head, normal neck, normal lungs. His heart exam revealed a regular rhythm with a normal first and second heart sound period. He had a grade 2 over 6 holosystolic murmur at the apex period. There was a soft S3 period. Next field. Unfortunately, comma, this middle-aged gentleman with a recent myocardial infarction and percutaneous intervention is presenting now with symptoms highly suggestive of recurrent disease in his LAD period. Open print not mentioned above, comma, his EKG shows recurrent ST elevation in his anterior leads, close print period. He needs to be hospitalized, comma, treated with heparin, comma, and undergo emergent repeat coronary angiography period. New paragraph, consent calf, 
click Control P. Click Close. Don't save. I think, I think you get the picture. This technology has the ability in real time, speaking very quickly, to convert your words into text. It does so with a very high level of accuracy in the range of 99% if you speak, if you enunciate carefully. Um, and in addition, I showed you a little bit of the fact that it can control your computer. You can tell it to print a document. You can tell it to close a document, um, all sorts of things. Um, you can initiate web searches directly from this. I can say, search up to date for uh, unstable angina in a middle-aged male. I can do a PubMed search just by voice. It'll, it'll go immediately and do it. Um, it also has the ability to distill complex paragraphs that you use repetitively, perhaps the consent for a lumbar puncture or another common office procedure, into a single command. I say cath consent, and it, and it puts in all the verbiage that describes my standard discussion when I consent a person for a heart catheterization. So the bottom line is this is a technology that allows you to be very productive because it accurately does the documentation and very quickly and uh, completes it in real time as you're seeing the patient. I often, uh, I often uh, say that I, man I managed to complete my note and send it to the referring doctor before the patient has re reached the parking lot. It's that quick. I use this in conjunction with our EPIC electronic medical record. I take advantage of as much of the electronic health record as I can. I pre-populate a note with the demographics, with the meds, the allergies, whatever I need. And then I use the speech recognition uh, to do the subjective part of the office note. To do, I usually use the speech recognition for the physical examination and then for my discussion about what I think is going on. Um, the, the next slide uh, shows some of the basics of speech recognition, and I have, a, uh, I have a big symbol over it indicating you really don't need to know how it works. The bottom line is it's simple and it does work. There are, at this point, uh, several versions of, of speech recognition available. Um, Nuance Communications really sort of owns the game right now in speech recognition. There is a smaller company called uh, Multimodal that has a primarily back-end product, but they're developing a client-side version. Um, Philips had a product called Speech Magic, which, which Nuance has bought out. Nuance really has the best products at this point. They have several products designed for the physician in the Windows environment. Uh, the Network Edition, which is really designed for large medical centers, with, uh, with, uh, particularly with a Citrix implementation. Uh, they have a Medical Practice Edition, which is what I am using today. Uh, the Medical Practice Edition is designed for practices with 24 or less providers. It sits on your local machine and nowhere else, and it works beautifully like this. They also have a product made for the Mac user. And since many people going to electronic health records are now doing this over Citrix, when you access your record via Citrix, it really doesn't matter if you're on Windows, you're on a Mac, you're using Linux. Um, and so uh, for the uh, Mac user, they have a, the, a medical product that works well with that too. So just in the way of demographics, I think it's interesting to know that it's estimated that there are 200,000 physicians that are currently using speech recognition. And if you aren't now, you might just consider it because it is a time saver. There are 40,000 physicians annually that are taking on the technology. But I think the really exciting part is when we combine, when we find a hybrid between this technology which is easy, but it's free text, and it won't necessarily uh, it won't necessarily fire and take advantage of some of the uh, back end clinical decision support that electronic medical record has with newer technology. And I just want to tell you how this is working. And, and Nuance Communications right now is beta testing a product that I want to show you, and I can't really demonstrate it, but that combines the best of both. And basically the concept is, um, my next slide, which is converting free text narrative to structured data, uh, involves a process called natural language processing. It allows you to begin by creating your narrative, your free text narrative, just you as a human being, telling the story. At that point, you apply the technology to it, the natural language processing pulls out the relationships. It pulls out, you know, the fact that this patient had hypertension, the fact that the patient was on hydrochlorothiazide, all those discrete things. It's very successful at pulling them out. Then gives you an opportunity to look at what it has, those relationships, those facts, those data points it's supposing to confirm it. You accept it, and then what, what it does is it puts it into a standardized HL7 language and then feeds that back to your 
uh, your electronic health record and, and allows you to still have your, your clinical text but take the important pieces of data from that and feed it into your health record to, to support research and, and, and everything that clinical decisions support. So I think that's really uh, all I'm going to present today. I, uh, I thank you for your time and if you have any questions, um, I'm happy to take them now.